Atomic variables in Java are very important part of Java's concurrency model. They are designed to provide atomic non-blocking operations for multi-threaded programs that ensures operations on these variables are thread safe without the need of explicit synchronization mechanisms like locks. This is very important for preventing data races and maintaining data integrity in concurrent applications. Let us try to understand what is a data race. A data race is a situation where two or more threads access a shared resource or shared data concurrently and at least one of them modifies the data without proper synchronization. Data races can lead to unpredictable behavior in the program because the order and timing of these concurrent operations can produce incorrect results or cause the program to behave unexpectedly. Java Concurrent Package provides many classes for atomic operations such as we have atomic integer, atomic long, atomic boolean and many more. These classes have methods that perform operation in atomic and thread safe way which makes them very useful in the scenarios where multiple threads are modifying the shared resources. Now let us try to understand this with a very simple example. If you remember, we have done an implementation of visitor counter in an application in our earlier videos and there we had to take care of complete synchronization so that there should not be any missed counter increments due to multiple threads accessing the shared resource. Here we have this atomic counter class which has an atomic integer as an instance variable count. This count variable will store the number of visitors. In the increment function, we are utilizing the increment and get functionality of atomic integer. This particular operation is atomic in nature. That means it will, it will read, increment and update the value in a single operation. Unlike in the previous way where we were adding one and then updating the value to the counter, which was actually making it a multi-step operation and vulnerable to the data corruption. Similarly, we have getCount function which returns the value of count. So in our example, the atomic integer ensures that increment method and getCount method both are atomic and thread safe. Multiple threads can increment the counter without causing any data races. Now let us create a demo class where we will create multiple threads which will be utilizing this atomic counter class and increment the visitor count. So here uh, one thread is responsible for updating the count of the thread by 1000. So we have two threads. So we will be expecting the value of counter after the execution of both the threads should be 2000. Now let us execute the code and observe the output. So here we can see without using any explicit synchronization mechanism, we are able to achieve the synchronization using atomic integer inside the atomic counter class. So similar to atomic integer, we have few other atomic variables as well. I recommend you to go through the whole package and see uh, what all those atomic variables do. So they do the operations in atomic way for specific type of data. Like for integer, we have atomic integer. For long operations, we have atomic long. And similarly for boolean, we have atomic boolean. So please go through them and in case you have any doubt, please let me know. We will try to answer your queries. Now I hope the concept of atomic data types and atomic operations is clear to you. In our next video, we will cover a very unique topic which is most of the online tutor skips. That is compare and swap operation. That is also related to the atomic operations only. So I hope this video was helpful to you. In case you like it, please share it across with your dev community. Also don't forget to like and comment with your feedback. Thank you so much for watching. Keep learning.